name is Tatiana Anderson. Um, I, right now I work as a head of development at Palladium Fiction, a uh, production company from Sweden, from Stockholm. Uh, previously I worked for SVT, uh, Swedish television, as a story editor. And before that I wasn't even in this industry, so that was my first job. I started as a reader and then I became an uh, editor and after that it just took its own way. So. Bara så vintern blir vår, kaltrarnas krafter läker marken så. Träd kronan svall, gran för tal, stillande koda. I'm working on Huge Scott now and I came a little bit uh, late into the process. They were already doing the storylines for, for the second season. So now we are writing the, the scripts basically and the production is starting soon. So now we are in the middle of script writing and are preparing for production. I came to screenwriting quite late. I, was, I had a background in linguistics and literature studies, even mathematical theories. I was doing research, but I've always loved TV shows. So when I decided to leave this academic path and, and try to engage in some other profession that gave me joy, much more joy, I decided that now I'm, I'm going to learn about screenwriting. And I really started from scratch. Uh, I quickly realized that I didn't understand it, how it was, the shows were made. So. I started reading a lot of books about it and, and analyzing shows and I came to my own understanding of it because sometimes the, the explanations were giving me more puzzle than, than explanation really. So I came to think about uh, the stuff, well, what's, what's really, what really keeps shows running, what keeps them engaging, uh, what are the levels of story. Um, usually people talk the premise has to be like that, the concept has to be, but it's really still not get, got going into the deep, deeper parts of the story. So I started thinking about volcanoes and uh, fractals and patterns that repeat themselves and drilling machines and all whatnot. I got all of these images that convey to me how, how a good short show would work, would work. So maybe one of the main insights I had is that TV drama, and this is not my first insight that people were saying this, but the TV drama is really about repetition much more than about the forward movement. So the plot will be moving ahead, but all the time the story is repeating its conflicts and themes and drilling deeper into them with every episode. So I soon, when I was looking at uh, Breaking Bad, I saw these fractally patterns of plots. You can see the same pattern repeating themselves throughout the show on different levels. And uh, usually when I show this picture of fractals, people go, oh, what ha does that have to do with, with Breaking Bad? But it has a lot to do, to do with it. So repeating of patterns and instead of just r running, running with the plot, um, is what's important. That image came to me when, when I was trying to understand uh, the engine of the show. So I came to realize that, well, conflict needs to be the part of both the premise and the deeper stuff, the theme. And I was thinking about conflicts and the heat and the friction, and I came to this image of a volcano, that the thing that explodes upstairs and start lava, start lava running down is the premise of the show, that like Walter White, Walter White is getting sick and he has to deal with all sorts of problems. And it starts the show, and we follow the stream of lava, and that's the plot. But what's giving that lava? What, where does it come from? It doesn't come from the surface, it's come from the deeper place. And then I started to look at uh, what's in the middle of the volcano, what's, where does lava come from? What's in the magma chamber? Where does that get filled from? And that, that metaphor gave me a lot of uh, understanding of different levels of, of conflict. In the story. I do believe that the best stories are, I don't, I don't know if they are universal truths, but they are universal conflicts, universal themes, and there are not that many of them. So the premises should be as crazy and unusual as they can be, but the themes really are just few. And if the story is interesting on the surface, but engages on the deepest level uh, with those archetypal themes, uh, it will probably hit home everywhere. And in the middle, there, are, there is this cultural reference stuff and the Danish story, we'll be telling a story about the Danish way of life, American, about the American way of life. But underneath that, there is an even deeper level that connects everything and everybody, no matter where they live. So I think drama 
can be amazingly connective if it's done well, if, it's, if it goes to those deeper places. I think that there is, they, they talk a lot about this local aspect of a show. If you, rooted it, if you root the show locally, it will somehow become globally uh, relevant as well. And it's true for some shows and not for others. So I, I come from Serbia, uh, Yugoslavia, so I would, there are shows there that are magnificent. I re they really do wonders with a lot of, uh, not much money. And they engage the viewer, but you have to be from there. You have to understand the culture. You wouldn't even get the references or the humor if you're not from there. And it's fine. But then there are, for example, those Danish shows like Borgen. It is really, the show is really rooted in Danish culture and it, it really is rooted in the, the, the modern Danish way of living. But because it has a deeper reference, it, because it goes even deeper, uh, it connects to everybody. So sometimes they manage to make it global. Not, it's not the intent, but it ends up being local. But sometimes it is quite impossible because it's too hermetic to the culture, the show. When I think about ideas, I think it most in terms of what, what makes my tummy tickle. Like I read with my gut, first of all. And if my body is not engaged in the screen, I'll, I'll, I'll find the explanation for it, but I won't be analyzing while I'm reading. I, I want to get engaged. And I, I, I would say, personally, I'm as much as intuitive as rational. So that's a tough one. It's a tug of war between those two sides. Some shows get to come to a conclusion, like Breaking Bad. They, they were lucky and there was a right timing. But like the show like Firefly never got uh, beyond the half of, of the first season. And it was timing, it was bad luck, but still. And Deadwood was even, not even finished. It was supposed to have one more season. But they're still great. Because the shows, these shows are not about the ending. It's great if they can come to an ending that is satisfactorily, satisfactory, but it's not the main point. Now this is all the money Niska gave us in advance. You bring it back to him, tell him the job didn't work out. We're not thieves. But we are thieves. The point is, we're not taking what's his. The way we write on huge cut, uh, by the way, it's a made up word. You know, it's a word that means earth sprout. So it's, fun. it's a fun word in Swedish, nobody knows what it is, but it, it has a meaning. Um, the Swedish way of developing goes like this. The broadcaster will, will ask for a whole season and they will ask for a complete storyline, which, which makes the writers write it. Of course, we change stuff all the time for every episode, but it, it really promotes this linear thinking from the beginning, the middle and the end. And it's almost a, a, the hero's journey going on around there. This, the American way, I don't think it works like that every time. They work more episode after episode. They have a vague sense of where they are going, but they are not forced to put everything on paper in detail, like in Sweden. And it has its good and bad consequences because it's too much. I think I find that it promotes linear thinking just a, a little bit too much. There is not enough repetition going on. They just forward movement of the plot. So many of the shows end up being very plot driven because of that, because you have to make that plot quickly. While, while those shows that are allowed to develop a little bit more organically, and I looked how they did it on Breaking Bad, like episode after episode, they stay put for a while, but then they move. They stay, they drill into something for a while, and then they move on, while we have to go like quickly through the whole plot. So I don't know, I would like to combine the two <laughs> methods. So you do have a plan. Yeah, Mr. White. Yes, yeah, science. Okay. When I lecture, I start with how we consume TV shows nowadays, and I put up a picture of Boromir from, from, from Lord, Lord of the Rings, who says, you don't just see one episode of a show, you binge watch them all. Like, that's, that's really how we, how we look at shows, and it has its consequences. If you go deeper into a story, uh, and we got lost in them, we can even become addicted much easier. Uh, but it also, uh, for people who are creating shows, writing, and want to understand them structurally, it creates dangerous illusion of linearity 
of a show that was planned. It seems so planned when you, when you binge on Breaking Bad. Oh, they must have known about this in year one. Well, they didn't. And, and it gives, if you want to know how the sausage is made, then the binge watching is probably the worst. You clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. For those who are interested in understanding how to make better shows, binge watching a show is probably the worst way to understand the show because you'll get lured into a plot, you will not see the structure. And there are so, many of these shows are so well written that they mask the structure. So it's much better to see episode after episode, see what they are repeating, see what the conflicts are. Uh, if you want to understand the show, if you just want to enjoy it, then binge all the way. We are creatures that are not easily satisfied, so if there is a possibility to be binge, people will do that. And it might not be the healthiest way to, con to, to relate to a story, but it's, it's the most emotionally most satisfying way, because it, it hooks you deeply. You want to stay for hours. So. <laughs>